Did you ever land on why it is that you do what you do today? Because what I do today is help people help themselves. I don't want to be with my husband. I don't want to be with my kids. I don't want to be with my friends. I just want to be with Hala. And that's, I think, the best thing I've done in my journey, having once or twice a year being alone without anyone. Is that when you find out the real quality of your life? I think I find out how pleasant I can be with me. Most people can't be alone. Most people. It's to, it's not easy because we've been not raised and trained that you should be alone. And I reject anyone who says, no, I'm, I'm great being alone. I spend seven, eight, nine, ten hours a day alone. Yeah, really? playing a game. Thank you. Yeah. How many, how many of those hours are you on your phone? A behavior that gets under your skin. Oh. Um, whatever I am today is because of her. And um, yeah, I'm grateful that she brought Hala back back yeah because you she, were somewhere I, else. I was lost you were lost yeah she she helped me bring me back bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. welcome to the mo show podcast episode 83 with an extremely special guest today i reached out to her yesterday around this time and here she is sitting in my studio right in front of me thank you auntie hala Kathan, for coming on the show Thank you for thinking of me. I'm, I'm honored. Thank you. They say shoot your shot and um, good for you. I'm comfortable shooting my shot and, and, and it just it really makes it all worth it when it results in this. Yeah. And if it didn't, it's OK, too, because, um, you know, we have to take the step towards anything in a right way. And then it happened, it happened, it didn't happen, it will happen maybe different times. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, so we will start with the question of what is the best way of explaining who Hala Kadhim is? Um, I think I'm going to make it very simple and say I'm human because um, uh, first thing we are human, you know, other things come later on, nationality, religion, you know, status, um, all the other things that adds on. But the base is I'm human. I relate to everyone in the world because um, being human, it has all the combination of good and bad, calm and upset and sad and happy and everything. Yeah. That's me. Very simple and very complicated. <laughs> Did you ever land on why it is that you do what you do today? I think I found my calling. Uh, I think it's very much me because what I do today is um, help people help themselves. Now, because I helped myself before and I, I made it through, so I knew that if I did it, anybody else can do it. So I think I relate because um, I love helping. It's it's very fulfilling for me. Something that you noticed from a younger age? I think I took it because my father was very, um, he used to do a lot of good things, good deeds. He used to help a lot of orphans. So they used to call him Abu Aitam or Abu Fakara. My mother used to do, had her own charity. Uh, she just established herself to, you know, collect money from people and buy food. She had a pickup. She will get sugar and rice and oil and divide them and make them and go to people's house by herself. So she did help a lot of people and I think I took that from her and I always noticed that it's very fulfilling when I help someone it gives me that uh, it's selfish which is a good selfishness you know I mean we do it for ourselves not for anyone so it's very fulfilling when you said that your grandfather was named Abu Fuqara and my father your father yeah what's his name Ahmed Ahmed Kadhim. Ahmed Kadhim. Yeah. You know what's 
funny though? Yeah. My great grandfather from my mother's side yeah. was dubbed that name as well. Oh my God. And we touched on before we shot that there seems to be. There is something that I think, I think we are related, but I think very far away. Far away. Somehow. So we're connected. Yeah. yeah. Besides being human. Besides being human. Yeah, yeah. we are connected too. <laughs> yeah. Lucky me. Lucky, Lucky me. me too, Mom. Um, your son Anas came on the show eight yeah. months ago. Yeah. Really, it was, it was one of the best conversations I had uh, on, on this podcast. He mentioned you before I got to know you through your Instagram channel and I got up. I mean, it doesn't take long to land on or figure out what kind of a person you are after watching one or two videos. Okay. Uh, he said that I'm a graduate of Hala Kadim School and I'm proud of it. She has a PhD in life. <laughs> he okay. also said she didn't graduate university. No, I didn't. She has a PhD in life. I'm sorry, I'll take the second part over the first part a thousand mm -hmm. times over. What does such a proclamation or a statement from Anas mean to you? Wow. Um, I think it is such a great achievement when you see your son's great men. And when I hear that from Anas, um, what a privilege and what an honor that uh, my son can recognize, you know, something i think you know of course he sees me as that great but i think you know, i'm in the end uh i give what i wanted to give and i gave what i felt and um, um it's again fulfilling to see your own son say that about you i mean i'll cry now because just to hear i mean to know that um, um he's he is himself a great man and i think I don't know if you've seen my episode with him when I said he is the greatest man I have ever met. Is this the one of three months ago or three years ago? Uh, three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah. And uh, and I, I remember, you know, Maya Angelou said that to her daughter. Uh, her mother told Maya Angelou um, that she is the greatest woman she's ever met. And when I thought about it, I believe the same. Anas is the greatest man I have ever met. And uh, not not taking anything from other my other sons, as you know, I have five sons. Um, they're all great. Uh, it's just that I think me and Anas are very close because of I had him when I was very young and we went in life together. So most of my life, he's been there. Yeah, part of my life, he's my history and my present now. You were 18? I was 18 when I had him. Yeah. Yeah. I was a kid myself. I didn't even know anything much. I mean, think about it. 1981. I was a kid. I was in the state. And I remember I only had one book about how to raise children. And I would put Ennis in my lap and I opened the book and I read so I can know what to do with him. But then I was, a, I'm a very good um, learner. So I kept asking everybody and learning as much as I can. And Alhamdulillah, he turned to be an amazing man. Did you have expectations going into what you wanted your sons to become and looking at them today, if we were to take your eldest two, would you say that your expectations have been met or exceeded? Every mother or every father has an expectation. We all do. You know, you want them to be better than you. You're there. the only people you want them to be better than you. And um, you want them to be successful. And the, the usual thing, like everybody. But did I think that I'm going to have five great men this great? I don't think so. I think uh, they exceeded and uh, they proved me that... Um, there are good men in this world. And I know maybe pe people think they are because I'm the mother. Of course I'm the mother, I will think of that. But I think they've been good men to everybody around them, mm -hmm. so. You 
have uh, a son who's adopted. Yes. And I think it's one of the most beautiful things in the world for anyone to do if they can afford it. Yeah. Um, not just sad, money. N- not just. Not just money. You can afford the time. Time, time, of course. And the feeling. God, my, my mind went money out of tool. Yeah. And the feeling, mama. It's not enough time. Yeah. You have to have the energy, the understanding, the feeling, the openness to something is not yours. And of course, the money. Yeah. Is it something that you wanted to do all your life or did the opportunity land in your lap? Can you talk? No, no, no. What happened is um, when I was very young, uh, my sister's friend's mother, I I got to know when they were like close by neighbors that they said this boy is her adopted son. She's, she's raised them. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Since then, I had it in mind. Uh, then, of course, you know, I got married. I had my children, but I always had it in mind. And then I think I was in my 30s. I got to know that there is a volunteer job for um, um, orphans and unknown children. And I went, but I had that in my mind. It was always in my parking. So the minute I saw Tariq, I knew his mind. Really? I knew it. He ran in front of me. I think I saw it. I said it in uh, my interview with Anas. He just ran in front of me with a big smile. And I said, he's mine. (laughs) And yeah. And I adopted him. So lucky me. It's amazing because, um, you know, we are we can easily give love and, uh, you know, give so much to, to our children. But then to take a child's life who would have had a completely different future mm-hmm. and to harbor him uh, and, and, and give him something that he probably wouldn't have gotten elsewhere is something that I think it's up there with some of the best things a human can do in their life. I, I wanted to change his destiny. I didn't want to just give him education and clothes and food, mm. which is nothing wrong with it. I, But it's a big step. People need to think about it, not just rush into it because people get emotional and they think it's a good thing. And, you know, it's a it's a it's a noble thing. It's not as that as that easy. You have to really like when I people come to me and I'm like, slow down. This is a human you're bringing. It's not a course in the university that you don't like. You can drop it. This is, you have to really be sure that you really want to do this. And then he has to be like your own kids. What I mean on kids, if you are loving to your kids, you do the same. If you punish your kids, you do the same. There is no shafaqa, pitiness. No, take that out. He's your son now, or he's your daughter now. Take that drama out. Treat, Treat the child as if it's, it's your own. One thing I want people to know that you're not going to get the, the love right away. Over time. You, it has to grow on you. You have to be open to, your, to, your, to that. Let, that's why I said you have to have the openness. You have to be willing to take that feeling in and let it grow with time and time and time. And, you know, I, I always knew, that I, I always loved Tariq. But when they called him for Khidm al-Wataniya in the army, I, there I really knew that he's a part of me. Because mm. I, I felt like I was lost. Me and Mac, my husband, were lost in the house without him. We were like, although he's a quiet boy. I mean, he's a man now. He's 27, inshallah. But it was... There, I really knew that he's something yeah. very special to me. And growing up around brothers who are all your blood. Yeah. And uh, meshing with an adopted child, was it seamless from the beginning? Yeah, Chemistry was smooth. all good. Yeah, very smooth. Because I I think I don't do it as a dramatic way. I mean, like, I adopted 
and he's your brother and they were very open to it that's amazing yeah yeah very much can you talk to me about your role at JTC how you came up with it what it's about journey through change well see um, I had Hassan when I was 41 I used to paint before do collages and acrylic and all that and then I didn't like it so I started really resent I didn't like be doing the art it didn't make me feel good so I stopped it and I had Hassan I was 41 and after a few years I wanted to do something because I know my family uh, we are like we don't stop working so it's in our genes so I started looking for something and I could not find I tried so many things it didn't click something I failed something I didn't feel right then I um, heard about Camino Santiago in Spain, north of Spain, and it's a very, uh, it's a over a thousand year path. You should do it. I will tell you about it. Please. Yeah, I, to I told Anas you have to do it too. Uh, all my, I mean, Hassan and Tariq has done it. Anyway, so I heard about it from my cousin that they tried it, and back then I didn't know what is hiking and what are these things, and I asked about it, and I thought, you know what? I want to try it. So it was my first time going, doing hiking, and back then, Nobody knew what is hiking because we are in a desert any environment. We don't, although, you know, I think uh, Rasul, وسلم, he was going to Ghar Hira, which is hiking. Truly. But we didn't know it back then. And in, in, in Emirat, we are desert. So it's not something, a part of our culture. Anyhow, I went and I started uh, walking, walking. And it was like shocking for me in the beginning because I didn't expect this. I didn't know much about it. And then I started talking to, they were like a group of Americans that some of them were professors in their university. And I started talking and walking. And I thought, and I remember walking in, I still remember where I was. I don't know where it was, but like I remember I was walking in that road and it was like this bulb, you know, the Tom and Jerry bulb <laughs> thing. It came up and I thought, I want to do this. So then I went, I asked the organizer if I could bring a group. And then I asked one of my friends, she said that she'll come. And the idea started cooking. After that, I went to Austria by myself, which was really hard because it was not like the Camino. Camino, you'll see a lot of people walking the path. And the Camino, it's a lot of history. And uh, you you have this kind of passport and they stamp it along the way oh, wow. in any restaurant, coffee shop. And um, you're going to see a lot of uh, old, old uh, churches and um, remains of things. You know, it's, it's crazy. Then I went to Austria and I kept hiking alone. It was very different experience than Spain. And I kept, uh, it was the time that I learned to be by myself. So, and the idea was cooking more. So I started, then I went to London. I, you know, uh, I've not done my university, but I thought, and I'm dyslexic. So I had challenges. So I went to City University. I took some courses there about counseling and coaching. And then after that, I took uh, NLP. And these courses was easier for me. and. In, in there, they, they understand what is dyslexia. Mm -hmm. So it was more like they'll help me out when it's a lot of writing and reading. So then I did this and I started uh, from an idea. My, uh, my husband always says, you started something out of the air, with just nothing. an idea. Yeah. That's it. And I started with a very small group and it went until now. Besides being active during the day, at the end of the day, is it workshops? Is it conversations? So basically, there are different types of trips. There are uh, trips that is based on hiking, which is Spain and Austria. And we go from morning, early morning. We have breakfast and we just go. 
like I'm having on the 25th of April uh, to Austria. So we have this book and you get to know your path through the pictures. Wow. It's amazing. Wow. It's really amazing. Okay, I'm doing this. Yeah, yeah. I, I will really, yes. I will recommend it. Yes. I'll, 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 I'll arrange it for you. Thank you. Anyhow, so I do alone by myself once a year. Oh, you go alone? Alone, yes. Wow. That's, I, it's good to talk about it because I'll tell you what I get out of it. Then, um, so that's Sp uh, Austria. Sure. Then we have Spain, which I told you that we go um, 100 kilometers in five days. And um, it's different because Spain is straight and um, Austria is up and Elevated, down. Yeah. So then we have trips like to which I did to Norway this year. And then I'm doing in May uh, to Italy from 14th to 19th of May. Uh, by the way, I have a lot of clients from Saudi. Saudi are amazing, amazing women. So 14 to 19 of May I have for Italy. Italy. And we have, I have to Bali in the end of the year in November. So basically this is totally different kind of, this is based on workshop every morning. So we do the, we have breakfast, we have the workshop, then we have discussion group, then we have lunch, then twice we go to hiking, but that's a choice. Okay. So if the woman really doesn't feel she can walk, she, it's okay. Spain and Austria, no, it's not a choice because you have to come knowing that's the base. Then we do meditation and we do cooking class and we go travel hunting. So it's like amazing retreat. So I call them retreats because it's like, I am with you min al -subah, from morning till night. After nine, 10 I'm sleeping. <laughs> then I need to be left alone because yeah. I need to rest. Other than that, I'm with you all day long and we discuss and we talk and we do exercises, we do musabaqat. Um, uh, so it's like, it's very, very good uh, retreat. Being in nature, Auntie Hala, just resets the system you feel when you're connecting in nature and you're doing all these things. You said the word. Now, I'll tell you something. For years, I was wondering, what is it? What is it that clicks when I, when, when I take women and they come hiking or they are in the nature, what is it? Everybody kept thinking, Shuster, what happens that people come back changed? Yeah. And you don't have to have a problem. Some people come with, they don't have a problem. They just want to explore themselves or the nature or the world. Some people have problems, it doesn't matter. And I know that, see my mom, human cannot go without connection. What I mean with connection is touch, eye to eye, feeling, talking, hearing, energy, this connection we need. The senses. All the senses and extra, which is what? Connecting to nature, mm -hmm. what you said. Now, I got to know this. the secret is when we go hiking, is different than a car or a train or a plane. You connect directly with the land, with the touch, with the, uh, the energy from the trees, from the, the smell, from the air. It all goes inside and you're walking so the Daura Damawiya, the circulation, blood circulation is moving. Mm -hmm. Then you get amazing ideas things happen to you. These bulbs start coming out. So that's the thing, the nature. It's real, you feel it. Oh my God. It's so real. It's beyond, that's why I go alone. Last year I took Anas, because I told him, I remember, Anas, I remember you that have trip. to stop. I told him, stop, you ha you've been working all the time. And he every year says, yes, I will. And then he cancels and he cannot. Last year I was going by myself. One day before I went, he says, I'm thinking of coming. I'm like, Okay, okay. I arranged everything for him because he hates arranging. He came with me. I told him, Mama, I want you to know where your mother goes. I want you to feel what I go through. The path that I went, I took him there. He loved it. He said, I want to do this every year. And now, I even Maad wants to go. 
Hassan, mashallah, has done hiking with me since he was seven. He came with me to Nepal alone. We did seven hours hike to the Himalaya. It was crazy, but he was seven. Near Everest base camp? Yeah, but no, not the base camp. We just went to the Himalaya. Yeah, to Annapurna and we went hiking. And Tariq has done too. So yeah, it is something very, very special. It's easy to ignore nature when we get sucked into our daily lives. Days become weeks, become months, become oh, years. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like crazy. Anas, for example. Oh my God. But he tried it and now he wants to do it again. And he now goes walking uh, next to his house. There's a park and he mm -hmm. goes now, he does it as a routine. So I'm like, <laughs> that's that's yeah, your that's doing. Good. That's your doing. Yeah, because really, um, this disconnecting yourself from everything. You are all alone in the middle of nowhere, in the forest. You just, and Anas loved the forest. You just walk and walk and walk and you feel it. I mean, believe me, I feel high. I swear that's what my high comes yeah. from. Like when I go alone, I sometimes stop because I want to cry. It's that's overwhelming to me. I really connect to nature. Just being in the forest, huh? Alone. Makes you, gets you emotional. I don't want to be with my husband. I don't want to be with my kids. I don't want to be with my friends. I just want to be with Hala. And that's, I think, the best thing I've done in my journey. Having once or twice a year being alone without anyone. Is that when you find out the real quality of your life? I think I find out how pleasant I can be with me. Hmm. I became my own friend. It was not easy in the beginning because you face you, you want to do this yes. you don't want to see things that you yes. did or you you've been through and it's painful and you feel sometimes ashamed and you feel embarrassed and you feel angry and see, all these feelings came to me when i was all alone in austria and then i thought you know what i faced them i put my eye into the fear eye to eye and I said, no, nope. this is who you are. Now, you can run away from who you are or you can embrace yourself. And guess what I did? I embraced it. So when I go alone, I don't want to be a mother. I don't want to be a wife. I don't want to be a friend. I'll tell you what it is. I want to have the choice to give my ears to, who to give my ears to, and my voice to. Yeah. A choice. When we are in daily life, you don't have a choice. But when you're all alone, I don't need to talk to anyone unless I want to. And nobody knows me there. So I just go for hours. I don't have to talk. And I don't have to hear anything. So I give myself break. You say how it goes. You're in charge of your own energy. Yeah, I love it. It's so it's, true. It's so beautiful to be alone. It's so simple, but at the same time, it's yeah, very complicated. Yeah, yeah, it's it's both. Most people, most people can't be alone. Most people, it's too, it's not easy because we've been not raised and trained that you should be alone. And I reject anyone who says no. I'm I'm great being alone. I spend seven, eight, nine, ten hours a day alone. Yeah, really? playing a game. Thank you. Yeah. How many How many of those hours are you on your phone? That's exactly. not alone. That's, That's not, not alone. عجينة محضرة بشغف قوامها خفيف وهش وطعمها ولا أروع. I think. Um, it's a skill. It's difficult in the beginning. Then you, it's a, it's a joy, at least for me. Are you disconnected when you're obviously in the, in the forest? There's no wife. There's no. Yeah, signal. but then I keep my phone because I have children. That I, I, oh, yani I have to be realistic. I cannot disconnect being a mother. I am not a mother in that moment. But if they need me, I want to be there. Yeah. If something happened, I want to be there. So I keep my phone with me. But mostly, I don't even hardly take any pictures. Hardly. Sometimes I just say, Hala, just take one few pictures so you know that this year when you are 70 or 80, you could say that I came to this place. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but I'm not a, I only take pictures when in my Rehla um, Tatagir, JTC, because it's my business. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Okay. Hala Kadim. Shoot. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we're about to take it to, a, to another, another gear right now. Okay. Your role as a life coach. I, life educator. 
life like ed- to call it educator, yeah. life educator. Yeah. I probably spent the most amount of time last night at around 3 a.m. Wow. Wording this question. I was sleeping at 10. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> What's the most common issue that people come to you for? And another way to say it is what is the most common piece of advice that you find yourself giving people? I don't like to use advice because everybody will run away from if you tell them, yeah, yeah, take nasiha. I'm like, no. Uh, I think most common thing is relationships. You know, people suffer a lot from relationship. Um, the close ones more than the stranger ones. What I can say to people, about, it's like a lot of things I could say. I think um connect i'm stressing these days on this word because uh, i mean you it's funny how you you brought it up and uh, that's exactly what i was telling anas we need to emphasize on connection because people don't connect people see each other go out but they don't connect you when i saw you i connected with you that's what we want we want genuine connection. Now I could tell people what I mean with connection is that first you connect with you. It's not easy. Just try slowly, slowly get to know what you like, what you don't like. Do you like French fries? Do you like baked potato? Do you like a steak? Do you like fish? Simple, silly things. Then do you like coffee? Do you like uh, um, Coke? Do you like, what do you like? Then you say, what do you like? Do I like to with, be with people? I don't like with you. Do I like somebody talking to me this way or no? Why do I say this? Why, why? all this connection into inside? We miss. The minute you learn about you, you learn to do boundaries. Mm-hmm. The minute you do boundaries, you're going to have healthy relationships or no relationships. So I would say, yeah, connect to yourself, connect with people around you. Um, what do I say? Boundaries. We we lack boundaries. We don't understand boundaries right now. We're doing a show with Anas in um, OSN. And one of the main subjects is boundaries. Boundaries with yourself and boundaries with others. So really, it's very important to get to know the real boundaries because in our, in the, in our world, um, we, we put it in a aib or mujamalat and don't say no and don't do this because it's aib or, and I think we we lack boundaries we and do. I think if you have boundaries healthy ones you have good relationship and if you have good relationship you have a peaceful life I just started to look into that word and and really try to incorporate it in my life yeah. and and I saw the benefits of it you just need to really know it. Like, Andres, it's not easy. It's, you really need to understand first, what is your boundary with Muhammad? Mm. What is your boundary with you? Nobody even think about it. And we spoke about it in, uh, in OSN. What is your boundary with you? How many times you put yourself down or you wanna do something and you don't do it because you don't even know what is your boundaries? Some people misbehave with you or treat you bad. It's because you don't know your boundaries with you. Like, I'll give you an example. My boundary is I don't like anybody to call me halul or just hala, especially the young generation. That's my boundary. I know I don't like it. So I set the boundaries like Habibi and I get the muck. I, ra- I, I prefer if you call me Ummi Hala, Khalti Hala, Umm Anna, Sister Hala. I love al That's boundaries. What I'm just bringing an example. And it goes into a lot of different, what is your boundaries in your body? Do you like somebody to hug you? Some people says, I don't like hugging. So that's boundaries. It's, it's, very, it's very important because then Nasib do Yatuk Gima, they give you value. Yeah. And yeah. for the longest time of my life, I, I believe I let people walk all over me. Most people. Mama. Corporate, family. Yeah. And a lot of them might be watching this right now. And you know what? All of us, mama, all of us, we do that because we have been taught. 
لا ما يستوي ما يستوي يقول لا هذا واجب شو بيقولون عليك بس يو كان بوت باوندريز وذ مانرز يستوي انه تو دو ات يستوي Absolutely. يصير يصير يس yes. yeah. and it's taught me that word by the way i lived in the uae for five years oh really it's a country very close to my حبيب heart حبيب قلبي الامارات والسعوديه بالذات oh, وحده oh god yeah it's uh, there is a قصة حب بين البلدين. في yeah really yeah. a real brotherhood. I think there is it's deep down from our leaders that they are very connected and uh, and the whole أنا أنا أعشق أهل السعودية because I think and I was talking um, to وديعة um, my friend she I was telling her Saudi people have the courage to express their feelings. I've not seen much of any other nations. I'm not saying the other nations they don't express because now they'll say, oh, no, no, I don't mean they don't. But the amount of express expression or how they express their feelings. I think I was talking to you too about this. They have, that's courage yeah. to come to you and tell you, Ana ahubbik kateer, Ana, I love you so much, Anti. You know, all your beautiful words. And they do have this Saudi people. I love that. Like, they are so courageous. Did you la- did you figure out why? Did you land on the why? I think, I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't think about it. Why? why? Why do you think so? I think they I was, are just so expressive. Family oriented, but but even Ahl al-Khalij are very family oriented. We're, no, we're no, all... it's nothing with, to do with family oriented. I think the whole, I don't know. I, yeah, like anywhere I go, they come to me and they express in a huge way. Unapologetically. Like, أحبك, أحبك. And I'm like, أنا أحبك كمان. I'm like, they really, and they say, and they show you. And I was in one of the lectures, they carried me. And I'm like, I know I'm small, no but like, we love you. نحبك <laughs> كثير. I'm like, okay, thank you. It's so beautiful. I mean, coming from the airport to everywhere I go, they just come and show you. It's so beautiful. Does it get old for you being celebrated wherever you go and no, loved? No, it's never old. It's never. A smile on your face now. Is it always, does it always excite it's, you? It's, it's so, such a beautiful feeling. And sometimes people write, send me messages and say, we wanted to say hi, but we were shy. And I'm like, no. It, there is nothing more beautiful, Mama, than connecting to each other with feelings. It's the best. Nothing. You cannot buy love, Mama. You cannot buy love. You cannot pretend love. You have to, yeah. Al-hub la yustana. You cannot show me you love me because it shows if you don't. You can't fake it. So it's crazy. It's such a beautiful connection. <laughs> it is. And I'm glad you touched on love because that's exactly where I was going to go today. Okay. On the next question, uh, with your episode uh, with Mac, yeah, <laughs> three months ago, yeah. I-, I watched it last night. Uh, after I finished the questions, I-, I watched the episode, and you said that you're in love with your husband Mac today more than you were when you just. I'm not. It. I'm not in love. I love him more. You're not in love. You love no, him. More. I love him more. There's a difference. Can you tell me what the difference is? In love is when you just get to know and you're on the cloud. And Allah, I want to see him every day. No, I don't want to see him every day. Uh, you know, you're you're living with your spouse. You don't want to see them every, all the time. I love him more. I lo- In love is always in the beginning. And if it's healthy, it stays. But it doesn't stay in love. It stays as love. And I love the ayah al Qur'aniya, جَعَلْنَا بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً مَوَدَّةً This soft, kind love. That's the definition of mawadda? That's for me. Yeah. I love al mawadda, kilmat al mawadda. And I feel I love him more than when I met him. Yeah, I do love him more. Do you have a definition for the word when you hear the word love? How do you explain it or define it? Connection. Connection. Everything goes back to connection, Everything. huh? Everything. And it comes to the guy, but go connect yeah. because the word is is heavy. Everything. Means We're connecting now. 
We are indeed. We're connecting with the table. We're connecting with the environment. We're connecting with, with everything around us. With the food. What is your connection with the food? What is your connection with money? It's connection. So I think one of the definition I would love is connection. And so like that ah, feeling that you have with someone that they make you feel at peace. Yeah. We drive each other crazy, but you know, but I love him. Oh, you get it too, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I thought it's just us. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Everybody like, let's, I mean, Habibi, you fight with your own self. I do. Of course, you're going to fight with somebody or disagree or get frustrated with a partner in the house or somebody you're with. Yeah. That's not, it's that, if you don't, that's the red flag. My sister-in-law is fortunate enough to share your name. Okay. She is in her mid twenties yeah. and about to get married now. Okay. She loves the show. She loves you. I am sure of I that. I love her back. What advice uh, do you have for young Hala? Oh, for young Hala. Mm-hmm. Woo! She's about to get married. Oh. How old is she? She's twenty-five. Too young. But anyway, she's getting married. Um, be realistic. Marriage is not a la la land. Marriage is not a movie that you see that you are happily ever after. No, 70%, 60% of marriage is pain in the neck because it's responsibilities. Like you have to get up. You're not lovey-dovey all day long. You have to get up. You, okay, as you, your wife, you have to get up. You have to think of the children. Okay, no children. You have to get up and see to, to go to work or do your business, get dressed. You need to do some gym. You need to go to the supermarket. The car needs fixing. You have to go to your fa- parents. Bills. When, bills, money, money issues. This I think one of the highest reasons of divorce. And then when do you have time for each other? Sure. A lot of people drift apart. So if you are realistic in your expectation and marriage, is communication marriage is um taking a break having a space i know she's young and she'll she's excited that she what you need a space one of the reasons of my ma- successful marriage with mac is that we both have good space yeah, i watched that part yeah we have very good space so we're not like this he loves his you know the space i love mine and I think that's one of the main reasons. So have your friends. Don't disconnect with your friends. D- let him go with his friends. Enjoy being apart with different. Like, I think one of the best thing I could say, if they could have interdependent relationship. Because relationships are three, like three kinds of the relationship. Codependency, which is a, a very uh, unhealthy relationship is like this mm-hmm. 24 hours uh, yeah. or one side is more and where are you going where are you coming why did it and then and that doesn't it could work come, and it could come with your mother with your sister with your friend with anybody then it's uh independent which is very separate they're roommates <laughs> then there's interdependent which is mo does his thing your wife does his her things then you meet up on points. And if you can apply that with your friends, with your family, with your wife, with your husband. It works. It works a lot. You speak from experience. Absolutely. Yeah. So I meet my, I have my meeting points with Mac. I just don't like driving with him because we fight every single time. In the car? In the car. Any particular reason why? Well, he's very bad at direction. Okay. It irritates me, and then he gets irritated, then I get it, and, and so we made a decision a while back that we don't drive together because we really end up fighting most of the time. One time, last time, he said to me, I, I promise I'm not going to say anything. Let's go together. I'm like, okay, okay. Because, like, really we fight. So I knew what works for me and Mac. I don't go to a movie with him. He's terrible at movies. So I know. He knows. 
the best thing, like I don't go shopping with him because he hates shopping, but I go walking with him. That works. We sit and read together. See, where do you meet? Where do you don't? Yeah. You just get to know what you really like. Yeah. Yeah. Addition by subtraction. You got better because you removed something. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you have to be realistic. It's okay if you don't like to drive with him. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, we, we don't want to say what I had. Uh, somebody says, oh, really? And I'm like, yeah, what's wrong? I can't stand him when he were driving. What's wrong? It just doesn't work when we're, we're in the yeah, car. We found out what does not yes, work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, a few as uh, I like to call them, uh, quick fire questions. Okay. Something you prayed for when you were younger that you have today. Wow. I don't know. I got that's, her. I got that's, her. That's a very big question. I mean, I thought about a lot of things. I mean, Rahla Tatagheer, JTC, something that I always wanted to do something. And in, it came an amazing thing. I wanted to fall in love and get married, and I did with Mac. I dreamt of uh, adopting, and I had Barak. So yeah, That's many. I think there are many things, many things I thought about. Um, I kept dreaming to have a house next to my kids, and I did. So uh, what else? I wanted to do what I love. And shuhra came. Tahseel uh, hasil. Byproduct. Yeah. So I wanted to to do something has meaning. And something fulfills me. And I always kept thinking, well, I, wa I want to do the something. I want to do. And it came. I mean, thank you for helping me think about it. I was never, never, never thinking that I wanted to be famous or well known or whatever you want to call influential. Never had that in mind. Okay. It just came a very good uh, addition. Got it. A behavior that gets under your skin. Oh. Um, fakeness. Um, double standard. Oh God. Tanaqub. Izdiwajiyya. Izdiwajiyya. Yeah. Like, you know, you pretend to be the coolest, not the coolest. I mean, the, I would not use the right the word. Like, you know, you're a noble and you have, you do things that you don't want to say or how I can explain it. Like, you know, you see a lot of people pretend to be something and you really know who, what they do. It's like even on social media, they pretend to be, uh, they show how pious and good they are. And when you really know them, you don't even want to know them. About, yeah. yeah. So as Duwajir really gets to me, fakeness. Um, yeah, I think mostly mm. that I, I can't stand fake people. I mean, that really gets to me. I think that that has to be one of the reasons why uh, Anas, your son, has a show that is built on realism. Oh, Habibi, yeah. He has a... Comes from you. He's a, he, I mean, I think he got it, but he has his own additions yeah. too. But mm. yeah, he, he's very much like me that we don't like... Uh, we like raw. We like... Oh. Like even when I did my interview with him, I didn't know the questions. Yeah. I didn't know what's coming. And we just went along. And I remember Mac thought he was like in a, in a normal interview where he yeah, said, uh, Anas, we're going to take that part out. And Anas is like, no, no. Why? why? Why should we? <laughs> why and then you were we? like, yeah, why should we? No, that was an honest answer. But yeah. He doesn't have any social media, Mac. He does not. None. Zero. Zero, zero, zero. Like no Facebook, no Twitter, no uh, Snap, no Instagram, nothing. I think the household compensates for that. Oh my God. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. But... He says, no, I'm okay. And he's terrible with his phone, but he says, I'm getting better. Okay, we'll take his word. Any memorable failures? Oh, yeah, many. That helped you become the person you are today? Well, I think... Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, what failure? A memorable failure. 
maybe things that I did I was not I was not proud of that I failed in uh, not knowing Hala in the beginning mm. that failed getting to know yourself you touched yeah. on that yeah yeah and then that failure helped me uh, a lot um, tried different businesses I failed on them because I could not stand it after I tried it. I had to try it because it was in my system. And then I had to do when I'm like, no, nope, I failed. And I'm like, it's OK. Next. <laughs> so I don't have an issue with failing. Okay. It's OK. It's uh, actually it's a part of life. Not many get that, by the way. I know. I think because we taught wrong yeah. that you should not say you failed. No, it's OK to you use the word. Say I failed. Don't don't polish it. Yeah. This is the problem. No, use it said learning is, uh, of course it's a learning if you want to learn, but you failed. We fail every day. We fail at cooking. We fail at relationship. We fail at exam. We fail at getting a, an, going to a wrong uh, a road. Mm. That's like with, like with Mac. Telling me about Mac. He's so bad at direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, own it. Own, own it. it. We, we it's okay to fail. Yeah. Next time we'll do things differently. Yeah. And we won't fail. Yeah. yeah. I feel sometimes when I say something that I'm not supposed to say. So I don't like that. Mm. On your social media, when you, what I assume happens is that you come up with a thought, you write the subtitle, and you shoot where you are, wherever you are, and whoever you're with, and you talk for a minute or two or three. Am I far off how you do no, things? No, no. Actually, I, I try to choose a, a certain spot if I'm doing the reel in Instagram because the lighting, but I don't prepare. You just... So today I want to talk about, like last time I spoke about, don't be harsh on divorces mm. or, or you know. Um, Yesterday's was a good one, actually. The sub I love the subtitles. Uh, where are we? Oh, yeah. It wasn't yesterday's. It was maybe three days ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 well, Those wow. who just love so being negative. Naked. My God. Yeah. And I'm like, if you really want to fast, fast from Naked. Naked. Because naked to alina. Yes. Like the love for negativity. Like I have to say something bad. I mean, instead of listening to the whole thing that I'm talking about, or Anas is talking, or you talking, they just say something. And I'm like, seriously? You didn't listen to anything? anything. You just looked at something. Imagine their their eyes look, it means what's inside of them is so naked to see. So yeah. I have an idea, I put my phone on, and I shoot. It just comes. And most of the time, it's one take. Mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, if I'm like my hair is jumping and my, you know, clothes is not right, then I have to redo That's it. And yeah. yeah. But other than that, yeah. And sometimes I just say I have my kishiti. So I'm like, mm. I have to live with my kisha. <laughs> more no's or more yeses with age? A good no is a, it's a healthy yes. Hmm. So if you say no, you always have a healthy yes to other things. So with age, yeah, with age you don't, خلاص uh, يعني, especially me, you know, like I'm I'm sixty now, and I'm like, عمر كله إن شاء الله. حبيبي. So I'm like, nah. They tell me, come the other day, somebody invited me for Sihur, and I'm like, I sleep at 10, even in Ramadan. I just sleep at 10. I mean, 10 to 11, that's my thing. The other day, I went out with Anas, I slept at 1.30. I hated myself the next day because I wake up early anyway. So, yeah, I don't say much no to my, son, my sons because they're grown up, and when I have time, it's my precious time. And you know, Mama, when now, Parents grow older, they they look for the time to be with their kids. It's like I get excited. It's like when kids are excited to see their mothers when they were kids. Why did it touch you? It touched me because uh, my mom calls me every day. Habibti. You know, yeah. so uh, and if for whatever reason I can't come, I feel it in her voice. Oh, طيب خلاص بكرة إن شاء الله. So sorry, mommy, yes, tomorrow. Yeah. No, I don't talk to my sons every day. But when the minute, but we see each other, like, you know, whatever time we have and we call whatever message it is. But the minute, like, Anas calls and says, you want to go for a walk? I'm like, yes, 
حارة says تعالي 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 to not so guilty I'm like okay and I'm like I really become like a little girl that I cannot wait I get so excited and then I put the sleeping apart I don't care and I'm and Max says where are you going I'm like I'm going to see Anna's I get I think it's with it's age so beautiful it's such a the roles reversed yeah because the kid was so excited to yeah. see you when you're back from work and now I'm like we get excited to see them and it's so beautiful especially if you have a good relationship i think it also touched me when i had kids as well yeah because i'm now envisioning my life yes in you know the other day hassan said something <clears throat> very nice to me hassan is my youngest uh he said <clears throat> you know mama i enjoy being with you i, don't know. I was like the best thing what a nice even- thing to say it's beautiful. It's not. A, he says, I don't feel it's wajib, mama. I feel I want to be with you. And I'm like, he's going to be 19 tomorrow. What is it? Yeah, tomorrow. And I'm like, for a 19 year old, instead of saying, I just want to be with my friends, he enjoys being with his parents and brothers. I'm like, I've never said that at his age. I know. And I'm a shabab. I know. Yeah. No, but he is he's a good boy too. Yeah. He's your youngest, huh? He's my youngest. Totally different age. I had Anas when I was 18 and he was, I was 41. 41. Big difference. Yeah. Were there different challenges in raising Anas in the early 80s as opposed to Hassan in the early two? Oh, yeah, yeah. 2005 he was born? 2004. Four. Yeah, big time. Big time. Different. I was in a different stage in my life. I was much older. Um, you don't put the same rules anymore. They're different. Like, and I, I say something to Hassan. He says, convince me. And I'm like, what do I say now? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, like, Anas and Ma'ad al Har never said come to me. I'm like, even Tahrir, convince me. This is the young generation. Like, make me understand and convince me. And I'm like, Subject, you were not going to do it anyway, <laughs> but it doesn't work anymore. They are, they have the internet in front of them 24 7. They come from different times, different times, and different rules. And but he's a good boy, mm-hmm. and um, he, he's uh, you know, he gets offended, of course, that's the age. But then I, I like about Hassan that he goes back to himself after being puffed up, then he thinks, yeah, he comes back and he says, okay. He got convinced. I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you said you're not a life coach. You are a life educator. Educator. Yeah. Who do you go to in your life when you are faced with a challenge? Now, all I am today is because of Elaine Kenny, my mentor. And she was my psychotherapist when I went to her when I was in early 30s. I mean, I think I was 30 years old. So I was doing uh, therapy with her. Okay. And then after a few years, she said, I will be honored in my whole career. I never did this except with one person before you, that you can be, if we can be friends. I think I wanted to faint that day because I was like, she wants to be my friend. Oh my God, this great woman, the greatest woman I have ever met, she wants to be my friend. I was like, uh, is it like real? So then wow. we, it's been 30 years now that we have been together. She's 20 years older than me. So she's 80 now. Habib at Galbi. And uh, whatever I am today is because of her. And um, yeah, I'm grateful that she brought Hala back. Back. Yeah. Because you she, were somewhere I, else. I was lost. You were lost. Yeah. She she helped me bring me back, come to to Hala, and uh, although she doesn't take the credit, and I I always tell her take it please because through her teachings now people are following me hundreds of thousands. Mm. It's because of her. So she's the core. You give credit to her. Yeah, because she helped me. She trained me a lot. You know, when I started this, she did 
a lot of training. She really helped me a lot. And with a lot of cases, with a lot of workshops she did with me. So I'm trained. I'm her student. I'm really her student. And she's my friend and mentor. Did she help you become more vulnerable? Because it's very refreshing how comfortable you are showing, you know, you being weak. Yeah. You admitting that you were lost. Oh, yeah. Not many people want to show that side. Oh, no, I was. I was a mess. I was confused, lost. I was going crazy. Oh, it was a terrible time. But then if it was not that, I would have not gone to Elaine and I, I would have not come to today yeah. sitting in front of you. So I think it's all these things together. Um, she helped me be um, who I am really. Like, you know, she made me learn I love her school, which is a realistic school. Like I don't like the La La Land that they, some people teach now. You can do it. Yeah. Everyone's a winner. Come back. Come back. Yeah. Come back because some of the things you cannot do it. And it's okay not to do it. I don't like La La Land and Be El Awham. I'm very realistic. I'm going to give you something you don't want to hear. But if you really want, you're going to take it and learn from it and change your life but I'm not going to polish it. Mm. If you want to hear something you want, then I'm the wrong person. I'm going to give you the real thing. And that I took it from her and she taught me a lot. And she made me be a lot of who I am today. She helped me really. How often do you guys speak? Once or twice a week. Once she's, or twice she's, a week. She lives in New York now. She used oh. to live in Dubai. And now these days she's in Hawaii. But then I visited her last year, November, and I went to her to to see her. Yeah, she comes twice a year to Dubai, and all my friends they adore her. Yeah, God bless her. Yeah, bless her really. I mean, I wish you could do an interview with her. Oh you would my love God. her. <gasps> Next time she's in Dubai, tell me. I I pack this up and really? I come to you. Really, Anas even wants to because she's very she's the wisest woman you will ever meet. She will get you things that. Like everybody thinks this way, then she comes up with something, and I'm like, and you know this click she did. I think my first session with her, she, do you know this cube? I always say this cube when you do the Rubik's. It, yeah, when you you do it right, it clicks. Yes. That what she did for me, oh. and that what I do for some people now. It's the click you feel. It hits you right. Yes, and then you are on. So for me, Elaine is, there is something I cannot describe with words. I get it, I feel it. The way you speak about her, like it's written all over your face. It's beyond, she helped me, she helped my friends, she helped my husband, my children, every, everything. She's, she's a giver. Mm -hmm. She never hesitated in 30 years. In 30 years, not even once hesitated to, to listen to me and help me. Never. She's been there so generous with her time very and rare. wisdom. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm so lucky. I'm so, I'm like, just like God's gift. Yeah. yeah. Through everything you've been through, 30 years working with her, today when you look at your life, would you be able to say that life has now become easy for you oh yeah it's amazing so there is hope for people who are going oh, through a difficult believe life today. me i i was just talking the other day uh and i was saying i am in such a peace time hmm. i was even telling anas it's like really i'm at peace i'm very much at peace i stopped uh, co uh, counseling coaching i stopped giving online courses or even lectures unless somebody invites me that's different i'm only doing retreats which is the trips and i'm at peace can you put your finger on what allowed you to get to peace i think oh that you you have good questions oh I, my I, god i i learned from the best no i mean really wow i mean <laughs> wow that's a big question Thank you. too this oh highlight of the episode for me you really? saying what you just said you are and I'm not meddling you. Thank you, Khaled. I'm just telling you the truth. What is it? I think 
I accepted what I don't want to do. Hmm. I, I, I accepted that don't force yourself to do something you don't want. Okay, I have the, 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 the luxury of having um, that it's if I didn't do counseling that, you know, financially, I have my husband helping me too. So it's not like only my income. So I have the, the choice of not doing but I knew do you know I closed down my office I work from home now I knew and it was one I was one year what I do I cook things so if I have something in my mind I keep talking to Elaine about it or to Fatma and I keep thinking and Fatma is very close friend of mine and I keep thinking and talking loud and talking with Anas and Anas goes the the other way like he goes attacking why this and why that but it's good so I keep cooking then I know the minute and one night I decided to close my down, my office down so the next day I went to my my employees and I said you have three months I'm closing down the office I only kept uh, my I have okay a website developer of course and an accountant and I have my office manager and I said I don't want to do more anymore what I was doing I just respect what I really want to do and what I really don't want to do and if you don't know what you really want to do go to the things you don't want to do mm -hmm. eliminate so, yeah so it will help you so I think one of the things that made me peace um, is knowing that I really didn't want to do these things anymore and you saw your life improve oh yeah yeah very much so so what I did, uh, quality time at home. I love baking. I love cooking. Um, my husband loves my baking, so that's encouraging. Mm -hmm. And I love uh, sitting in front of TV, being useless. I love it. You know, playing my game and my phone. But then, of course, you know, when I wor have work, I have, yeah, it's okay. And it's good to be useless sometimes. You have to be useless. Like batali, like really, sit there and do nothing. Like feel batali, that was very good in in, uh, in Corona. Like for the first time, I felt I'm batali. I'm like, oh, that's nice, doing yeah. nothing. They don't have to run, meeting, and that's where I didn't like. It was too much of a rush, and too I was running and doing so many things. Now I'm just doing what I love to do. It's funny you say that Corona, um, having time to yourself. This, oh yeah. This idea came up in Corona, corona. time when I had two months in the house away from corporate. Hello. Yeah, I was like, wait, I think I can do a little bit more in my life. Hello, <laughs> yeah. that's nice. Yeah. Any part of your life that you feel could improve on or needs improvement? I want more time with my grandchildren. Majid. Majid and Khalid and Majid, Yara. Khalid and Yara. Three, yeah. Um, I need to work on that. I think I was raising kids since I was 18, so I don't have much patience anymore, mm -hmm. but I want to have more. They're very good children, very well raised from Anas and their mother, really, sure. really. And from Maad and Yara, you know, his, her mother. So, yeah. Um, you know what I loved? Yeah. How well, because you don't see it. It's, 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 not, not, it's not rare. It's non-existent for someone in the Arab world to go on record and talk about how lovely his ex-wife and her family is. Yes. And he said it on my episode. He's like, I love them. They love me. She's it's... amazing. She's amazing. Yeah. Amazing girl. I mean, woman. Yeah. No, she is. See, I think, again, I had a very civilized divorce with their father. So they saw mm. how I dealt with their father and how fa their father dealt with me. We, we respect each other. We left each other in a very good term. And they didn't see the fight and your father is this or your mother is this and they didn't see that and I'm sure uh, a part of it seeing that and mashallah Maad and Anas they yeah. did the same yeah. yeah they learned from you and they are good men that they apply that yes sitting here today can you say that you have accomplished everything you wanted to accomplish I don't know if I, nobody can say accomplished everything, but I would say I did a lot of things that I wanted to do. 
So if I die tomorrow, I'm at peace and I'm a very happy woman because I'm I'm very loved. Mm-hmm. And I get a lot of love from people, from my family, from my friends. And what happened to my life, it was not even a dream. It was beyond my expectation. It was not even something, all I dreamt, like, you know, I had a peace for my freedom and this. But this? Oh, no, I'm glad. And I, I've done a lot of things. I think a lot of things that I wanted to do, I did it. So I'm, I'm very happy, you know. Um, Before I let you go, Khalhala, do you have any favorite quotes or words that you live by? that uh, you would like to share with us? I always use Maya Angelou's. Maya Angelou for me is something, a very uh, uh, a big role model. And one of her, I mean, she has a lot of good quotes. I have one that I relate to, but I cannot, uh, I have to look for it. Um, I need my phone. Just, if you can Google mm-hmm. Maya Angelou, um, uh, the dance that walked, then the quote will come up. So I have few quotes. One of them is people show you who they are. If people show you who they are, believe them. And the other one is. Is it. Uh, my, life. my life has been a. Yes. My life has been one great big joke. Yes. A dance that walked. It, it, it really makes me cry. Shall I stop? No, it's okay. okay. I get emotional. Some tissues. That's no, okay. I just need. It's Sorry. Okay. A dance that, a dance that walked, a song that spoke. I laugh so hard I almost choke, when I think about myself. Yes. Wow. That's exactly my life. My life has been one great one big, big joke. <laughs> a dance that walked. You don't walk when you dance. A, a song. That, that uh, a song that spoke. That spoke. You don't speak. You sing. You sing. So, see the contradiction. It's unbelievable. Contradicting. Like, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, like it is a joke. I mean, if you have brought my life before and you say, by the way, you're going to be this and doing this, I'm like, seriously? Yeah. Yeah, which, right. Which, which yeah. movie you have yeah, yeah, watched? Yeah. You would never. You would never. I almost choke. Every single time I, I read so hard, this, I almost choke. Yeah. 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 Wow, that's yeah. deep. That's yeah. deep. I love it. Thank you, Khala Hala, so much. Sorry that you know you, you got a bit emotional at the end. No, no, it's okay. Uh, I always I, get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> it's so refreshing because you really you're not you're not concerned on on how you might come off appearing vulnerable, weak. So doesn't matter. And and and, and honestly, like. Um, we, we need more people who are okay with conveying their feelings and, yeah. and not trying to show themselves in that macho light. So thank you for showing me that side of you. I have to thank you, first of all, really, I mean, for thinking of me to choose, you know, to come to your show. Absolutely. Um, knowing you as a person, you're even amazing, more than just the show. And you have a green eyes. <laughs> I didn't know that from the show. I just look at them, you have a green eyes. <laughs> the first thing uh, you said to me. Yeah, exactly. Um, I really enjoyed this, this. and too. you're good. Me too. Thank you're you. really good. Those Keep are words I'm going to live by. No, really. Keep going. Keep going. Appreciate it. Really. And if Elaine comes to Dubai, I will tell you, you know, you would love sitting with her. I would love to meet her. Oh, oh, oh she's. To meet the person that, that taught you most of what you, I, I'll be there. Her teaching is going to millions now. Yeah. It's incredible. So it's her. Yeah. It's her. He'll mend back. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly the vision I got. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're you're passing on the information. Absolutely. And and you've taught it in, in me, in your kids, and we'll we'll instill it in our kids. For, I hope that's so. That's the cycle of life, really. Absolutely. Um, thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Habib Galbi, really thank you so it. much, Ummi. And uh, it's an amazing, I really enjoyed my time. Yeah. I forgot the time. Yeah, I, I have know. to rush now. I know, I know. <laughs> You'll always have, this is your second country, Habib your Gandhi. second home. It's my first with Emirates. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. literally. Thank yes. you, Khada, so much. Thank you, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.